This video will show how to use variables and events in your code. First, we'll create a simple counter program using variables. Then we'll talk about how to write code using event-driven programming. And finally, we'll end off by creating a program to detect and count objects using variables and events. To start things off, let's talk about what is a variable. A variable is a container with a name that is used to store data. Variables have a name, a type, and a value. Believe it or not, we've actually been using variables a lot in our code already. For example, the distance object in millimeters or inches block is a variable. It stores the distance that the distance sensor reads as a number that we can use in our code. Booleans are another type of variable that we've worked with, but they don't store numbers, they store values of true or false, like answers to yes or no questions. Now we can't change the values of any of these blue sensing variables because they're set by the sensors themselves, but we can change and create our own variables in this orange section here. So for our first program with variables, let's make a simple counting program. I'm going to go ahead and click this make a variable button and we'll call our variable count. And voila, we have this little count variable that we can play around with. So let's work on getting this displayed on the screen. I'm gonna go over to the control section and grab a forever loop. I'm also gonna head into the look section and we'll grab a print statement. And we'll just print this count variable onto the brain. And we'll also set it to print on the next row. And because we're printing something every line, I'm going to go ahead and clear the lines before we print out our next line, just so we don't get a bunch of stuff printed on the screen at once. Now, if you run this, we'll see our count variable appear on the screen, but you'll notice it doesn't say the word count on the screen. It just prints the value of the count variable, which is zero. And this is a really important realization because what we're doing is using the name of the variable to go retrieve the value that it's tied to. It's the same as maybe say a bank account, where if you walk in and tell them your name, they can go and retrieve the number for how much money you have. And they could say, ah, oh, you've got $100 in your account. But the wonderful thing about variables and what makes them so useful is that they can change. They can vary. That's why they're called variables. So going back to our bank analogy, if you already had $100 in your account and add say a paycheck of $100 more, the next time you come back to the bank and ask them how much money you have, they're gonna tell you you've got $200. So for our simple counting program, let's make it so that pressing one of the buttons increases this count variable. To do this, I'll head over to the yellow events section and grab this block. When the right button is pressed, we're going to change our count by one. Now if we run this, you'll see that pressing the right button increases our count by one every time we press it. If I also wanna decrease the count, I can duplicate this block and let's make the left button decrease the count, I can change our count by negative one, which is gonna subtract one from it every time we press the left button. And if I re-download this program, now pressing the right button will increase the count by one, but pressing the left button will decrease it by one. Now I'm obligated to give a bit of a warning about using event blocks properly because I see problems with them all the time. I generally try and stay away from them whenever possible because the thing you have to remember is that every single one of these little yellow hat blocks is running a separate section of code and doing its own thing. And if you're not careful, oftentimes they'll interfere with each other and work in unexpected ways. To give a little example of what I mean, take a look at this program I wrote. Up here, we've got this forever loop that always drives forward, but down here, it will say that if the bumper sensor is ever pressed, we'll just back up for 12 inches. But when I run this program, this isn't what happens. There's a little jitter in the wheels when I press the bumper, but it doesn't back up for the full 12 inches. And the reason why is because these two events are fighting with each other for control over the wheels. This forever loop is always running over and over and over again. So even when I press the bumper to start moving back, the very next time this forever loop runs, it's just gonna start moving forward again. A much better way to write this program is using an if statement instead. Now if you run this code, the robot backs up as intended. To close things out, let's take what we learned about variables and sensors and use it to build a program that counts the number of objects it drives past. To do this, I'm gonna use a distance sensor mounted on the side of my robot like this. And we'll take our counting program and I'll get rid of these two events here. And I'll add an if statement to this loop. And we'll say if our distance is ever less than some value, say six inches, then we're gonna increase the count by one. Let's go ahead and give this a run to see what happens, and I'll stick something in front of the sensor, and we seem to be counting a lot of objects. 
And the reason why is because this loop here is running over and over and over again. And every time it runs, it sees a distance less than six inches. And so it does a ton of these change count by ones every time it runs. To fix this, we need to wait until the distance gets big again before we change our count. So I'm going to add a wait statement after this change count by one to make sure our distance goes greater than some other value. Let's say we wait until the distance gets bigger than 12 inches before we increment the count again. Now if you run this code, we'll see that the count only increases by one each time I move something in front of the sensor. It's also worth noting though that the screen only counts up when the object moves away from the sensor. This is because in our code, we're changing the count variable here, right when it sees an object closer than six inches, but we're only updating the screen down here after the distance has gotten big again, greater than 12 inches. To fix this, we can put our printing in a separate event. So I'll take it out of this loop here, grab another one of these when started blocks and put it in here. And we can do this because printing our count on the screen is completely independent from our distance sensing over here. Nothing about printing the count on the screen is going to mess up anything we're doing over here when we're sensing distance and changing the count. So if we run this now, it shows the count on the screen increasing as soon as the object comes into view rather than when it's leaving. Lastly, we just need to make the robot drive forward when the program starts. And to make things a little easier, I'll add this bit of code that resets the count back to zero when I press the check button. And now everything's finished. Our robot is counting objects as it drives past them and displaying the count on the screen. And we can even reset the count back to zero by pressing the check button. And with that, that's just about it. If this video helped you out, don't forget to click the like button to help others find it. And feel free to subscribe so you can stay up to date with any new videos. Thank you so much for watching.